super important about phonetics. One thing we want to think about is we want to do a sound check. How do we produce the sounds that we need in order to say the words that we want to say, right? So one of the things that's really useful for us in studying sound is to visualize sound production. How do we do that? Well, one of the things we can do is start by drawing what's known as an articulatory diagram some way of showing uh, in 2D how it is that we produce the sounds that we make. We want to go ahead and try to draw what it is that we're doing. So let's start with the parts of the body that are involved in sounds. These are articulators. So I'm going to use my marker here and draw something here. So another important step here with our articulatory diagram is to go ahead and try to label all of the human body parts that are important for the production of sound, which we also describe as articulation. All right? So here we actually have the sagittal view of the body, the sideways cut, okay? and we've got the eyes here. We know those aren't crucial to the production of sound, but one of the things that is super important is the nasal cavity. And here we have the nostrils. Okay, we've got the lips. We've also got the teeth. And then what else? Well, we've got we've got the alveolar ridge right here behind the teeth. Uh, the velum. The velum sort of blocks air from uh, coming up into the nasal cavity, but lowers so that we can produce nasal sounds. And then we also have the throat region. And what's really super important for us are the... Right? And then, of course, we wouldn't have any air with which to produce sounds if we weren't taking air in down into our... Lungs super important. And if we kind of zoom out from the vocal folds, right, then we might have a view of what's going on in there. Is it open? Or is it closed? This is important because we're thinking about the passage of air through the throat area as it comes up from the lungs. And all of that has, uh, makes a difference in the way that those sounds are articulated as they come out of the mouth and so forth, right? So if the passage is closed in the vocal folds, then it's kind of like this, okay? If it's open, it's kind of more like this. And if it's open, then that air can move through more freely with less friction, less connection to the muscles there. And so then we have what's known as a voiceless sound. Because of reduced friction. When that passageway is more closed, then we have what's known as a voiced sound because we have a lot of friction. And we know that we can run a test for voicelessness or voiced uh, sounds by kind of touching the side of our throat here and as we produce individual sounds like bah and bah, we can feel a contrast between the vibration that we can feel on the surface of our throat area. Greater vibration, more friction, voice and sound. So uh, in this next segment, I'm going to show you how to consider how to tailor your articulatory diagram to showing the production of one unique sound or one unique phone.